Japan, Canada, South Korea. Three incredible countries known to have some of the best living conditions and quality of life on the planet. Welcome back to the Travel Bible. In this video, we will compare three of the best countries on Earth, Japan, Canada and South Korea. The reason why we've chosen these three countries is that they are often regarded to have some of the highest standards of living anywhere in the world. We will take a look at their geography, demographics, economy and quality of life. Then, once you've watched the video, we will ask you which one you'd live in, which one you'd visit and which one you'd avoid. So sit back, relax and we hope you learn something new. So first, let's take a look at their locations on Earth. Japan is an island country located in East Asia in the Northwest Pacific Ocean. Canada is a country in the north part of North America. Its 10 provinces and three territories extend from the Atlantic to the Pacific and northward into the Arctic Ocean. And finally, South Korea, another East Asian nation, is located in the southern half of the Korean Peninsula. So let's start off by taking a look at their demographics. First, with the population of these three countries. So Japan has by far the highest population out of the three, with 126 million people, making it the 11th most populated country in the world and the 6th most populated in Asia alone. Next, we have South Korea, with just under 52 million, making it the 28th most populated country in the world, just below Kenya and just above Colombia. And finally, with 37.7 million, we have Canada, which makes it the 39th most populated country in the world, a fraction lower than Poland and just above Morocco. But as we've mentioned on this channel before, the population of a country isn't necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. So instead, we'll take a look at their population densities. I think we can all agree that the lower here, the better it is. So countries with a lower population density tend to be less cramped and congested and usually mean bigger houses with more space. So I think we all know which country will win here. By an absolute country mile, Canada wins this one with just 3.92 people per kilometer squared. Next, we have Japan with 334. And then finally, South Korea with 517, making it by far the most densely populated out of the three. And in fact, it is the 13th most densely populated country in the world. Next, let's take a look at life expectancy. These three countries are up there with some of the highest in the world due to their fantastic life quality. So let's start off with Canada in third place, which has an astonishing life expectancy of 82 years. Ever so slightly higher, we have South Korea of 82.5. And then finally, we have Japan, which is renowned around the world for its long life expectancy, sitting at an incredible 85.5 years. The traditional Japanese diet results in lower heart disease and cancer rates when comparing it to other developed nations. This, alongside low obesity rates and fantastic healthcare, means that there are now over 71,000 people over the age of 100 in Japan. And to finish off with demographics, let's look at the median age of these three countries. The lower here, the better. This is due to a younger workforce and less of an aging population. I think we all know who is going to lose this one. So, South Korea takes the win here, with 42.3. Incredibly, Canada's average age is just behind with 42.4, and then Japan at 47.7. Okay, cool, let's now take a look at their geography. We'll start off by looking at the percentage of their landmass that is covered in forest. To my surprise, Japan actually takes the win here at 68.5, followed by South Korea with 64%, and then finally Canada with 34%. It is worth noting, however, that 9% of the world's forests are located in Canada. Now, let's take a look at their total surface. It can be nice to live in a big city or a big country, as a larger space may offer more options for residents and visitors. So the higher here, the better. And again, we all know who has won this one. So this one is crazy. Canada has a total surface area of just under 10 million kilometers squared, making it the second biggest country in the world, only behind Russia. Next is Japan with 378,000 kilometers squared, and then remarkably, South Korea with just under 100,000 kilometers squared, 
meaning that Canada is roughly 100 times bigger than South Korea. And finally for geography, let's look at how much coastline these three countries have. So just like before, Canada takes the clear win with 202,000 kilometers, followed by Japan with 30,000, and then South Korea with a minuscule 2,400 kilometers. Next, let's take a look at the economies of these three countries. We'll start off by comparing their GDP per capita. The GDP per capita is calculated by dividing the total GDP by the number of people living in the country. A higher GDP per capita indicates a superior standard of living. So Canada actually takes the win here with 51,500 US dollars per person. Then Japan with 45,500 and then South Korea with 43,200. Next, let's take a look at the unemployment rate. So Japan takes the clear win here at just 2.9% of their population being unemployed, followed by South Korea with 3.7 and then finally Canada with 6.3. For Canada to lose this comparison with just 6.3 is incredible. These are three seriously well-developed countries. And finally, for economy, let's look at public debt. This is the total percentage of GDP owed in government or national debt. Now this one really took us by surprise. So South Korea takes the win here by a country mile, with just 39.5% of their GDP owed in debt. Next we have Canada at 90%, and then finally Japan, with an unbelievable 238%. However, over 90% of this is owed domestically, which makes things a little better. And finally, to end the video, let's look at the quality of living for these three countries. This is the section where these three countries really stand out from the rest of the world. So we'll start off with adult obesity rate. This is the percentage of adults that are classed as obese. So Canada actually loses this by a long shot, with 29% of adults in Canada being obese. Then we have South Korea at a very impressive 4.7, and then finally Japan with 4.3%. I wonder if this includes all of the sumo wrestlers who are technically obese, but are actually really healthy due to their super healthy diet. Next, let's take a look at hospital beds per 1,000 people. Canada actually loses this one by a long shot, with 2.7 per 1,000. Then we have South Korea at an incredible 11.5 beds per 1,000 people. And then Japan taking the win here with an impressive 13.4. And next, we'll have a look at the pollution index for these three countries. Canada actually sits 16th in the world. I actually thought it would be much higher and perhaps even in the top five. Japan sits 26th in the world and South Korea sits 57th in the world. Due to Canada having such a low population density and being such a big country with so much forest, I thought it would have been easily in the top five. And now to end the video, let's look at the percentage of the population that is below the poverty line. Japan's is seriously impressive. So roughly 14% of South Korea's population is below the poverty line, followed by Canada with roughly 9%, and then Japan with just 1.4% of their population living under the poverty line. That is a seriously well-developed country. Now it's your turn. Let us know in the comments below which one you live in, which one you'd visit, and which one you'd avoid, and why. We can't wait to read your comments. And while you're there, let us know which cities or countries we should do next. I would personally live in Canada as I speak English and have a similar culture to the UK. I'd visit Japan as it's a dream destination for me and unfortunately I'd have to avoid South Korea. However, I would still absolutely love to visit South Korea one day as it looks like such a beautiful country. If you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, a like and a sub to the channel would be marvellous. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.